So my review of the VacMate is I think it's an unbelievably good idea. The design needs a little work. My biggest problem, at the very end of this video, you'll see the bubbles that were in the system. And uh, they continue throughout the use of the VacMate. There's, there's bubbles uh, coming out. Um, other issues involve the gasket that goes between the basket and the plate. That gasket does not fit. Um, and I don't like the loose parts like O-rings and uh, springs that could easily fall into the pool or down into the skimmer and be lost for good. Um, it needs a little work, but I, I still do like it. If you use a pool cleaner like a Zodiac or anything like that and the hose is going into the skimmer, which is causing the skimmer not to skim and also is um, blocking leaves from being skimmed off the top. Uh, this particular VacMate will take, uh, will allow you to get both functions back in your pool. Here you can see when you run the hose from the pool to the skimmer, uh, it depresses, it presses down on the weir. And so therefore, uh, your skimmer isn't working properly. And then the leaves don't get caught unless they get caught inside this mechanism that they've given us. So the bottom line is, is instead of all the leaves getting caught in the basket that's been given to me uh, to use with this skimmer, all the leaves, whether they've been skimmed or the vacuum picked them up, get caught right before the pump uh, impellers and right here next to the motor. And that's what causes the motors to burn out. It's because we can't have the line clogged this close to the motor. So the motor costs 550, the Pentair VacMate cost me $70 and I'll probably never have to replace the motor again. So if the pressure's too hard, it'll get hung up on things like this that are protruding towards the pool. And if the pressure's too soft, it doesn't have a power, enough power to get past these stairs. And we wind up with uh, corners of the pool that are dirty uh, because of that. So having the right flow rate going through the hose and operating the mechanism is what we want. So the way the uh, Pentair VacMate works is it, get, it does both the skimming operation and the pool sweep operation. And it has its own weir built in. So this basket catches every leaf. You should never have a leaf go to the pump. And the only adjustment you have to worry about is right here. And this just adjusts the amount of water that goes into the skimmer chamber versus putting all the water into the hose. Basket, uh, you're gonna slip this into your skimmer, but you can see from my experience, my skimmer opening is a little bit too small. And there's a gasket right here, and Pentair gives you this other gasket for the skimmers that are a little bit smaller. So we'll change that. So we tried really hard to get the skinny gasket around the basket and uh, tried stretching it and everything. It, it took a, two of us, four hands, to try and get it on. We still didn't get it on. Took it back off. We tried stretching it to get it to uh, loosen up and it actually cracked. You can see the, the joint kind of broke on it. So like I said, it kind of worked, looked like it fit fine without this. So we're just gonna go forward without the gasket. Now in the bottom of the skimmer, um, you'll see two holes. One is uh, down to the main drain and that's plugged. It's the black one on the right. And one is to the pump and that one we leave open. And um, Pentair gives you a couple of plugs to choose from to plug your bottom drain because we don't want to be sucking uh, water from the bottom drain. It'll throw the flow off. And you don't need your bottom drain anymore. The old days they used to brush all the dirt to the bottom drain and suck it up that way. So we're going to go forward without the gasket. Um, it's a little loose, which I don't think it's going to matter because we're going to make an adjustment for the flow rate. The flow rate will take into account any water getting through there. 
point it so this weir is pointed towards your swimming pool. Most of the pool sweeps come with a different kind of uh, contraption to measure your flow. Uh, this one will tell you be between two numbers. Uh, this one has a box for uh, mid-max for where this plunger needs to sit. And uh, the Zodiac has uh, this and you're looking for it to be in the middle. So because we have this, we're not going to need this pressure gauge. So the pressure gauge uh, is going to go onto this elbow. So if your pool sweep says it has to operate between certain pressures, you'll need the pressure gauge. But if it doesn't, and it, they just give you a metering device, then you'll use this. Like this. And then the pressure gauge would go like that. And then we're going to make an adjustment here to get the flow rate correctly. And you're going to need a little screwdriver like this. So we're going to attach it here. It's a really tight fit. Like that, and then we're going to push that through. The pull sweep is going. The weir is almost all the way down. So let's see how this goes. I've already caught some leaves. So now all the water is going through the uh, pool sweep and it's uh, very aggressive. I can see that. Now I turn off the pool sweep. Now everything's going through the weir. So that all looks pretty good. So now what we're going to you got to keep this in the water when you do it. You really want a, the female end of the hose. That's it. Max. That's right in the middle. I'm going to try and catch a lip right here. And then I'm going to slide this under the lip there. So hopefully that'll keep it when I turn off the pump. All right, let's see how hard it is to clean out the leaves. safety bypass we have to make an adjustment there it's shipped to us fully closed and um, we need to put the pressure gauge here and check that be careful you don't lose the o-ring it says on step 8 page 5 that you have to turn this until it drops by one so it's bouncing between 10 and 11, and now I'm going to turn it clockwise till it bounces closer to 9. Alright. Now once you get to this position, now you back it off uh, a full turn. Counterclockwise, one full turn. So I'll turn off the pump, we'll put this away, make sure you have the O-ring, and that's it! So we had a really big windstorm last night and uh, the pool got filled with uh, leaves and palm brushes. Let's see how our vac mate did. 
So you can see the weir was being held down by these long palm fronds. I'm interested to see what's in the basket. It looks like it might be full. Wow. So that would have all that would have all went into our uh, pump last night. Look at that. I am sold. That is all night of uh, cleaning the pool after the windstorm. That would have been, uh, who knows when I would have finally found this in the, um, in the pump basket. Seventy bucks save you five fifty on a pump. Let's check the pump basket. Just a little bit, not bad at all. So I guess we'll still have to do a little bit of maintenance over here, but not as often as before. It's not all good. As a matter of fact, let me fire it up and I'll show you the uh, bubbles that I'm getting. Look, there it comes. A lot of bubbles. So there's a lot of air in the filter. And when I disconnect that uh, vacmate, I don't have this problem. So they're going to mellow out in a couple of minutes. You can see. Uh, They've already started to do that, so. But getting air, you know, aerating your pool is not a great idea. That's what you do to fish tanks, not pools. And fish tanks grow algae, and that's not what you want in your pool. So, um, and here you can see, this is where the bubbles start. There's, I think it has to do with the aperture down in the bottom of uh, this here. It has very sharp edges causing cavitation and I, and uh, for my little bit of fluid dynamics, I believe that's the issue with this design. They have to have a, a deeper throat and a lead in, kind of like a nozzle, so that it doesn't generate these bubbles. Another item you have to be really careful about is this uh, restriction pole. It's on a spring, it's a lot like a, uh, toilet paper holder where it has a spring in the middle and two sides and so in order to get it out I have to push it and then I'm going to hold on to this other side but you can eat very easily uh, drop this assembly and the spring uh, down into your skimmer and down into the hole if you take this basket out so you gotta be very careful with this. It should be designed uh, better to, uh, it should be designed to capture both parts so that they don't um, fall apart and go down into your skimmer. You know, I, I often find myself asking, what would dad do? And I decided maybe that would be the niche of my uh, channel, is what would dad do? And um, the key about dad was he was cheap and he was resourceful and innovative. And so what you're going to find on my videos is I try to come up with the most clever way possible that works, maybe better than a purchased part, and yet uh, fits the budget and fits the problem. So just ask, what would dad do? They better ask them before it's too late.